Coach, uh, dealing with all this stuff on top of just trying to put together a football team, but um, you, you know, have injuries and now you have COVID. Um, and you got guys that suddenly kind of just disappear because they're in quarantine. They may not have COVID, but they're in quarantine. How challenging is this? And are you finding yourself having to say, okay, you're going to need to take some reps at receiver or you're going to have to do this to try to be prepared in case? Well, yeah, that, the, the biggest challenge for us is trying to do most of our offense out of different personnel groups. So if it's 12 personnel, which is two tight ends and two receivers, if it's 21 uh, with two tailbacks out there rather than a fullback and a tailback to, to get us to where we can basically have three skill type guys out there, meaning a – you know, one of the tailbacks and then two wide receivers. Um, or if it's just, you know, uh, using a, a hybrid guy like a Sammy Wheeler or even a Jax Deneen as far as the skill set where you're filling some of those, quote, 11 personnel or three receiver sets with guys that you feel like are athletic enough to, to help you in space. Tell us. Hey, Courtney, you guys get a, I guess, a unique opportunity to scout a team this weekend while you guys are off. <clears throat> um, what kind of advantage does that maybe give you guys and into that first game? Uh, hopefully it'll give us a very good advantage just from the standpoint of seeing them play and seeing them line up and be able, being able to evaluate new guys that are going to be playing for their defense. Um, you know, they've, they've lost a number of guys on defense, but yet uh, from, from what we understand, they've got a few transfers in and some new guys that will be starting for them. Um, so the one, obviously, the ability to see them line up and just play and evaluate, you know, who's their best players as we see it. Um, and then the other thing, you're, you're hoping that a Memphis ends up in some of the same formations and or personnel groupings that we'll be in. Um, you know, you would think Memphis will run some run games similar to us. Um, but Memphis is brand new also, meaning that, uh, you know, that their head coach left and went to Florida State. And now uh, they've got a new new system and new guys, even though a number of them were, were holdovers, it's still going to be a, a new new offense. One other question I've, I've been meaning to ask you is, thinking back to last season, you might have a different definition of a trick play than me. I can't remember you guys like truly going all razzle-dazzle on anything. What, what's your philosophy on, on pulling those out? Do you not really like to use them ever? Or what's the well, deal? It's, it's kind of the normal thing where, uh, generally speaking, and not always, you're, you're thinking maybe the 30, 35 yard line, you pull something like that out and trying to maybe get a, a free score. Um, but then that always makes me nervous once we're inside the 50 yard line and, and all of a sudden you, you have one that doesn't work and that puts you second and 10. Um, and I've got to do a better job of saying that's okay. Second and 10 is not a bad deal. Taking the, the risk of, of having a big play that could, could create a touchdown for us. So um, we talk about it all the time. Uh, but I'm the one, though, that has to pull the trigger on game day. And, and we, always, we always carry about what I would consider to be four or five uh, kind of, not trick maybe, but, but specials, plays you don't see every, every week from us. And we just got to do a better job getting them called. John Kirks. Yeah, hey, Courtney, with the offense in, in general, with this group that you have this year, where would you say you feel like this offense is better than the, the version that you guys had last year? Well, it has to be seen, and we got to go do it. But, but I think we're, um, just because of the depth aspect, we're, we're, we're better at the receiver position because they're a year older. Um, obviously, replacing Dalton is going to be extremely hard, but, but you feel like uh, from a talent standpoint, um, Joaquin's a year older, uh, YB's a year older, Malik's a year older, Philip Brooks is a year older. Um, replacing Dalton is going to be extremely hard, but you hope those other guys that are back will, will make us that much better. Um, from a running back standpoint, um, you know, I think Harry understands the offense so much better. Tyler Burns is, has made huge strides as far as just uh, being a guy that feels much more comfortable in our offense. Um, and then you had, you know, you had a number of true freshmen last year that got on the field and played some um, that I think they'll be better. So part of it is just um, kind of assuming that from a, a maturing process and, and, and now being a second year on the field, guys are going to be that much better in our system. Um, but we still got to get out on the field and prove that and show that. And where do you feel like right now the progress is on the offensive line trying to break in, obviously, a lot of new guys there? 
I feel really good with the communication aspect uh, when we're in practice and, and when, we're, when, when we're obviously going against a defense that we see every single day. Um, the biggest concern I have is once the bullets start flying and we're out there in a game setting and, and as much as you try to simulate in a scout team setting uh, the, the front that Arkansas State's going to play, it's still not the same. Um, you know, we, we play more of a four down as our own defense and Arkansas State's going to play more of what we'd consider to be a three down. And, and it's, it'll be new. So the communication aspect feels good right now. But, uh, you know, the first drive in, uh, hopefully we're, we're all on the same page. Thanks, Courtney. Scott Fritchard. Hold on a second. Oh, you hit me up again. I apologize. <clears throat> Who are your starting five right now in the offensive line? Well, you know, right now, uh, if, if we were starting tomorrow, uh, which obviously it's not that far away, but uh, KT would be at left tackle. Um, our left guard, there's, there's still uh, obviously Josh Rivas kind of holds that, holds that position down. Uh, Noah Johnson be at the, at the center for us. Um, right guard probably be Ben Adler. Um, and then right tackle, uh, right tackle, uh, it, we're still a little bit of a work in progress there. Um, you know, we feel really good about Cooper Beebe. We feel really good about Logan Long. We feel really good about Christian Duffy. Um, there's about eight guys that I would tell you that, that should be in the mix to, to play. Um, you know, I think the, 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 the left side's a little bit more solidified. Obviously, Katori needs to be a guy that can really be a good player for us. Um, our little bit concern is just how do we make sure that we find eight guys that can all jump in there and communicate? Because like it or not, we didn't have spring ball. We didn't have summer conditioning the way you normally do. And all of a sudden, you go out and try to play 70 play game or 75 play game. Five O linemen probably aren't going to hold up. We need to find seven or eight. So who would be maybe seven, eight, nine, ten that you would look at? Well, really, I think it would go back to saying the same with, with Logan Long and Christian Duffy and um, Cooper Beebe, uh, those guys being that six, seven, um, eight, really. I, I, um, I lose count a little bit how many all have told. But the, I would say I feel comfortable that there's going to be, you know, eight or nine guys competing to be in that position. Um, you know, Dawson Del Forge has got to get here and actually see him play, but he's a guy that we feel like is a really good player and has done a good job fall camp. But again, when you, when you go against the same defensive front every day, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to make that call. I'm ready to communicate. Oh, wait a minute. Now there's a whole different front. Um, the movement skills are different parts of the defensive players. So are we able to communicate? But, but I, I feel good that, that we have nine guys that will keep competing. Thank you. Adam The team captains were just announced, and on the offense, Noah Johnson and Skylar Thompson were named the team captains. Just how much of an impact does it make on this offense, you would say, for Noah and Skylar both being named by it and for the rest of the offense? Well, I think the, the, that was a, a little bit of a no-brainer on Skyler, obviously, just because I think our, our players look at, uh, to him as a guy that should be a leader and is a leader. Um, he's been successful in our offense. Um, the guy that maybe some people wouldn't know would be Noah. Um, but, but throughout this entire situation, uh, Noah's done a great job trying to continue to teach the other linemen what we do. And, and you know, he's a guy that didn't play as many reps as maybe – um, you would think of to be a captain, but, but, you know, he was ready to play the entire year last year. And, and if he would have had to play last year, I don't think any of us would have been nervous about it. Um, so then as he kind of became a leader of that group being five seniors were gone. So who's the next guy up to kind of be that leader. He did it all year long. So I was not at all surprised by Noah. And, and I think he's done a good job, not just with the old line, but um, with the, our offense as a, as a whole. When, when he speaks, the running backs and tight ends and receivers all respect him and know that he's a, he's a guy that's all in. He cares about our program as much as anybody in the program. And are you seeing much of a difference in the intensity and the mindset of the players that practice now that the first game days, single days away? 
Yeah, I, you know, I think that we've been fortunate. This group has been pretty focused the whole time. They, they understood that they lost out on a whole bunch of spring practice and, and really summer opportunities. Um, so we've been pretty fortunate to have guys that are pretty focused. Um, I think the biggest key is now they're starting to understand you got to hone in on the details. Um, and you got to really start worrying about Arkansas State and not worrying as much about, you know, how, how do we block, you know, Wyatt Hubert. Now we got to worry about how do we block that next opponent. Let's try to squeeze these last two in real quick uh, with Ryan Black and Mick Schaefer. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey, uh, Courtney, how you doing today? Good. I'm good. Hey, um, it seems like from, from the answers that we've gotten from just other people, there's maybe like three levels of the running backs right now. You've got the two upperclassmen with Harry and, and Tyler, and you've got the two redshirt freshmen who played last year and Joe and Jacardier, and then you've got the true freshmen being Keon and Deuce. My question is, where does that leave the other two redshirt freshmen who didn't see the field at all last year with Thomas and Clyde? Is there any chance they're going to play this year? Just where are they at in their development? Well, yeah. I, I, I'm not disappointed at all in their development. Um, it's a little bit been more that uh, the first guys you, you mentioned have, have been on the field and have shown things, and then two new, two new young guys just bring a little bit different skill set. Um, if I could tell you that everybody was going to stay healthy the whole year, I'd tell you those the, the you know those tops quote tops the wrong term those those six you mentioned in the three different tiers would be the guys that would take the most reps. Um, that being said, with some of the COVID situation, you know, a Mosey and a Deuce and a, a Jacardier, they all have really good ball skills. So, you know, they might have to play some, some receiver type things at times. So, you know, it's going to be how do we just fit the puzzle together each week? Um, and we feel really good about the tailback position. We feel like there's eight guys with, with, that have good skills and, and can play at the college level. And then when, Mick, when you look at, oops, at sorry, Ryan, go ahead. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I was going to mention that when you look at the roster last year to now, it shows that Malik has gained 14 pounds. Is there a sense that him gaining that weight will maybe make him more durable and less likely to have the nagging injuries that he kind of dealt with all yeah, last year? You know, we feel like he's worked hard to, to put some weight on, um, and we feel like that will help him. We feel like that will allow him to stay healthy and, and stay a main, main guy for us uh, hopefully all year long. All right, last one here, Mick. Yeah, Coach, I just wondered, I mean, we, we talked about a lot of different uh, positional battles, but, but but not a quarterback, right? And there's a lot of a lot of schools out there that are having to, to find a quarterback, with, missing spring, missing uh, practices throughout the summer. Just wondering how, how much of a security blanket is it having Skyler there, a, a senior quarterback, some uh, a known and, and maybe the most important position on the field? Yeah, I think it's a, a huge deal for not just for myself, but uh, for our offense, knowing that if it's third down, he's going to understand how to make it work. He's going to understand how to get the job done. Um, and, and a big part of offense is, you know, being successful and moving the ball down the field and moving the chains is having a trigger guy that makes things right. In other words, uh, just as an example, let's say that uh, – you know, it's third down and five, and, and he sees there's a free access to take a hitch and get a first down without having to battle for it. And he has the ability to make that move and make that check and, and just take the free hitch. Um, that, that's something that a year ago I'm not sure he would have felt comfortable doing, and now he does. And that helps us tremendously as an, as an offense. 